Have you ever been angry in your life? Like angry, like seething. I want to share with you a story about a time that I lost my mind for no good reason. But then I want to give you four steps that you can take that will help decrease the anger and negative emotions in your life, which will in turn allow you to live longer and healthier along the way. Hey guys, Dr. D here with Alpha Omega Wellness. Today, I want to chat with you about anger and how it can destroy not only your relationships, but also your health. So I've been angry more than a couple of times in my life. In fact, my wife is amazing. I asked her the other day, I'm like, have you ever actually been angry? Because I've never seen her like angry, but I've been that way. And her answer was, I think she came up with one time that she had been angry. So let me tell you a story about anger earlier in our relationship. And I joke kind of that it almost caused us to split up. So let me set the scene for you here. We were in Disney World because we had gone to a medical conference and it was at Disney and we're walking around the park and we couldn't figure out what to eat. And shockingly, we still deal, deal with this issue today. But we're walking around and I suggest a thing. She didn't want it. She wouldn't suggest a thing because I probably would have said fine. So then I keep suggesting options and none of them sound good to her. But like three or four times she tells me, oh man, that person's got a big turkey leg. And eventually I'm tired of hearing about the turkey leg. And I said, do you just, do you want a turkey leg? And she says, yes. So I buy her the turkey leg and I know that she doesn't really want it. <clears throat> she thought that I wanted the turkey leg. So we get this huge giant, you've seen them, this huge ginormous turkey leg. We walk over to a bench and she's like, do you want a bite? And I said, no, I don't want a bite. And she's like, I thought you wanted a turkey leg. I'm like, I never said that I wanted a turkey leg. You said that you wanted a turkey leg. So this $13 turkey leg, we ended up just throwing in the trash. And thankfully we found our minds and stopped fighting over the stupid turkey leg. But in that moment, I was seething with anger because she wasn't wanting anything to eat that I wanted. She suggested the, the stupid turkey leg. And now it's become just a big joke for us. But I wanna to talk to you about how anger, right? If we had kept feeding that, anger can not only destroy a relationship, but it can destroy our health. So a little bit about anger. Even if you feel like your anger is justified, right? Because we're never angry for no reason in our minds. Even if you feel like it's justified, it is still deteriorating your health. Now, occasionally being angry in a moment right? That's not the end of the world. I'm talking about those of you out there who are in this constant state of just anger. In fact, JAMA uh, had an article in it, a medical article, where it they followed men over a 25-year period, and the men who were angrier by nature, they had a higher incidence of heart disease. And in fact, the, the uh, journal Circulation came out with a similar uh, article about women, that women who were self-described as being more angry had more cardiovascular disease. And it's not hard to understand why anger would actually erode our health, because what happens when we get angry? Our blood pressure goes up, our cortisol, that stress hormone that we talk about on here, our cortisol goes up, and we have, as a result of that, increased inflammation in the body. Well, one of the things that you need for heart disease to develop is not only the bad lipid particles, but you also need inflammation. So if you're walking around angry at the world, uh, mad at the dog, kicking the cat, unloading on your children, you are setting yourself up for premature disease in your life. And if you can find a way to navigate through life with less anger, it's going to bless your health and wellness. Let me actually share with you a couple of quotes that people smarter than me came up with. So a person named Malachi McCourt said, resentment is like taking poison and waiting for the other person to die. Elkhart Tolle said, where there is anger, there is always pain underneath. And Confucius said, if you hate a person, then you're defeated by them. So we start seeing how anger really is never going to bless our life. 
And I want to give you four ways today that if you're an angry person, you can start working towards resolving that so that you go through life more peaceful and kind and forgiving instead of going nuclear at the drop of a hat or going nuclear at a turkey leg. So the, the first way that I want to share with you that you can start working on anger is understanding this concept of high negative emotional arousal. And so what I mean by that, you can tell what happens when you're in a discussion and that discussion goes from your head, the logical part of your brain to your gut, right? We feel that move. We feel that in our gut. We maybe get tremulous. And so if you can identify that early on, if you can recognize when anger is starting to develop instead of not noticing it until you're at a 10, right? You notice it when you're at a four or five, that's the moment that you can start working to diminish that. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. A lot of people don't realize that they can actually have a barometer of themselves and to see when they're starting to get angry. A lot of times we think, well, I just need to feed the anger. It's my pressure relief valve. That's actually not what happens. When we feed the anger, it doesn't dissipate. It actually grows stronger. And so understanding that when you feel that negative emotional arousal getting high, it's time to take a time out in the discussion. And what I want you to do to actually implement this is I want you to practice it when things aren't so bad, right? The time to practice it isn't when the guy cuts you off in the street and flips you the bird. The time to practice it is the little things around the office that make you annoyed. If you can start noticing those and kind of self-regulating through that, then you can practice so when the big blow up happens on the street, you're more likely to maintain control. The second tip that I want to offer you is to focus on breathing techniques. You see, if we can control our breathing, we can control that sympathetic nervous system. That's the nervous system that's kicking in, that fight or flight, that surge of cortisol, the surge of epinephrine and norepinephrine. So if we can do some breathing techniques to calm ourselves in that moment, we can raise what we call that parasympathetic tone. That's rest and relaxation. We can raise that just by changing our breathing. And so one of the simple things that I'll have you implement is you can do what we call square belly breathing. Real easy to remember, right? Breathe in for a count of four, hold that for a count of four, exhale for a count of four, and hold the exhalation for a count of four. Super simple, but it's actually gonna change your body's physiology. It's gonna stimulate that vagus nerve to kick in, to calm down the blood pressure, to calm down the heart rate, to calm down the surge in cortisol. The third advice that I will offer you, and this is the hard pill to swallow, the third advice that I'm gonna give you is it's not about you. You see, that's hard for us as humans to kind of wrap our heads around. Think about it. I'm only angry when things are not going my way. So if I can realize that I'm not God and my will does not have to be done, I don't have to get my way in this situation, right? My beloved girlfriend, fiance, whatever she was at the time, now wife, if she wants the turkey leg, she can have the turkey leg. It's not all about me. I didn't recognize that in the moment. And so my emotional, negative emotional arousal went through the roof and I was seething and it took us a couple hours to kind of fix things that day. But when I start having an attitude that life does not always have to go my way, automatically that's going to decrease my anger. It's gonna make me more passive. It doesn't mean that I never get my way. It means that I don't throw a temper tantrum when things aren't going my way. Here's the fourth nugget that I wanna leave you with. And this wisdom comes from Jesus' brother, James. In James 1.19, he says, be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. What's he saying right there? He's saying, zip it, zip it, shut your mouth, pause. You see, if we just pause, then we decrease that reactivity. So be quick to listen, Slow to speak means don't say the first thing that comes to your mind. Pause, chew on it for a second, count to three or five or 10, and then make a choice to respond appropriately. Something that moves that conversation the direction you want it to head. Normally, the first thing out of our mouth is the most destructive. And that happens when, like we were talking about earlier, that conversation has shifted from our brain, the logical self, to our gut. And now we're just running on, on emotions and we're reacting. But if you will implement these four things, you can decrease the level of anger in your life. And as a result, you can live longer. And not only that, not only are you, gonna, are you gonna live longer, you'll have a more joyful, more peaceful life along the way. 
Listen, I hope that this has blessed you. If you like this content, if you find it helpful, let me just ask you to hit the subscribe button because I want to show up every week and give you more information for how you can improve your health and wellness. And I just want to remind you that in my worldview, there's ultimately one healer and that's Jesus. And you'll hear me talking about him on here. Not that I'm trying to convert you. I just want to open you up to the fact that you are an eternal spiritual being and that you are loved by God. And that if you pursue a relationship with Jesus and you start doing life his way, not only will your spiritual health get better, but I also believe your emotional, mental, and physical health will improve as well. Listen, I love you guys. I hope this has been helpful. I will see you next time.